What up, y'all? We're back. We're looking at linear algebraic nodal analysis example two, the full solution set given to you on the support website. We are running step by step. Right now, we're in step two of the LANA algorithm. In the last video, we did step one, which was to identify and label the circuit nodes. In this one, we're going to actually model the circuit as a directed graph. The reason that I call this document a quick reference guy is because it doesn't actually give a lot of background information about how to actually accomplish that step. To find more detailed background information, check out the step-by-step -step guide to the linear algebraic nodal analysis algorithm. We see in step two, model the circuit as a directed graph. There's actually three separate sub-steps that we have to complete. Let's start with the first one, which is to track the dimensions of key features in our circuit. Based on the guide here, we're going to create this thing called a directed graph and we're going to write it in calligraphy script. Each directed graph consists of a set of nodes and a set of edges and we'll talk about that in steps 2b and 2c. For now though, there are going to be some dimensions that we want to track and those are given on screen. We see that n sub g is going to be the number of nodes in the circuit including later what we're going to call the ground node. We just saw in the last video that there are seven nodes in this circuit, so that means n sub g is equal to seven. That's the number of elements here. Next thing we're gonna do is look at m sub r. m sub r is gonna be the number of resistors. We see in our circuit diagram there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight resistors. Check that out. 25 years of schooling and I still remember to count to eight. That's amazing. Um, so now we go down to M sub V. When I'm looking at M sub V, the number of voltage sources, I see that there are one, two voltage sources in the circuit. So I'm going to go ahead and call that two. And then M sub I is going to be the number of current sources. Here we see that there are one, two. The notation used here in any electrical engineering stuff, we'll see that R is resistors, V is voltage, and I is current. The number of edges in our graph, in other words, the number of total circuit elements is gonna be the sum, as we see right here on screen. M is gonna be the total number of elements, which is the sum of each individual element. So this is eight plus two plus two. I didn't bring my calculator, but I'm thinking that that must be something like 12. With that, we've tracked all the individual dimensions that we're going to need for later, and we finished the first subset of step two. Let's move on to the second part of step two. Remember, step two is to create a digraph model. 2a was to mark the dimensions. Step b is going to be to orient and enumerate all the edges of my directed graph using elements of my circuit. Remember that we said that every directed graph is just a set of nodes and a set of edges. We already saw by our step one in the algorithm that the set of nodes is literally going to be a set of positive integers that counts the number of nodes in our circuit. Since there are seven nodes, we say that n is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then in the set of edges, what we're going to do is determine connections between those nodes. Specifically, in a directed graph, when we connect two nodes, those connections, those edges, have direction. So the question that we're going to ask ourselves is, given this circuit, the nodes of the graph are going to be the nodes of the circuit. Each element of our circuit corresponds to a single edge in our graph, and then we're going to have to draw a direction for that element. Before we do that, let's just go ahead and erase all the elements. So remember, this is the node identification heuristic. I'm going to literally just superimpose a set of nodes, which is going to come into play when we define the directed graph. So now all of a sudden I'm left with just the nodes of my graph that came from the nodes of the circuit. And what I'm looking for when I'm trying to do directed edges is which nodes are connected and what's the direction of those connections. In order to figure out how to connect these nodes using edges, we're going to use the circuit diagram with some special rules. First rule is every time we see a current source, that current source is going to define both connectivity between nodes and the direction of that edge. So right here we see that the yellow node 4 gets connected to the green node 2 through that current source. We immediately know that we're going to make an edge between node 4 and node 2. 
not only are we going to make an edge between node 4 and node 2, but we know the direction of that edge. That edge is going to go from node 4 to node 2 because that is the direction of the current source. When I'm looking at this, my directed edge goes that way. Similarly down here, we have an edge between orange node 7 and red node 5. We know not only does that connection exist, so undirected would just be that the connection exists, but we know more than that. We know that the direction of that connection is going to be in the direction of the current flow. So rule number one, replace every current source with an edge and orient the edge in the same direction as current flow from that source. Rule number two, for every voltage source in the circuit, connect those two nodes in the direction from positive to negative. Nerdy mathematicians would say the initial point of the directed edge is the positive node and the terminal point is the negative node. So specifically here we see that we could go from 2 to 7 in that direction. Here we go. We'll go ahead and say from 2 to 7 in that direction. So now we have that one done. We're going to do the same thing for this voltage source from 4 to 5 in that direction. So from 4 to 5, we follow the direction from positive to negative. The third rule is that for the resistors, a priori, we don't know what's going on with the electronics. These two types of sources, the voltage sources and the current sources, we have information about how those sources should behave when we connect them to the circuit. We don't have information about how the resistors are going to behave. And so what we're going to do is just assign those directions arbitrarily. Let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and just say, hey, resistor one, I'm going to go ahead and draw an arrow this way. Resistor two, I really can just do anything that I want here. It doesn't matter how I assign these reference directions. Resistor three looks like it connects green to node two to orange node three. So I might have to come, I don't know, something like this, come down this way. So there's resistor three. Resistor four is gonna go green node two to pink node three. And I'm gonna go ahead and reference that direction that way. Same thing for resistor four. Oh, that was resistor four, I'm sorry. Resistor three was there. Resistor five goes from pink to purple, which is really fun. Resistor six goes from purple to orange. And why don't I just go ahead and orient them all all roads lead to orange in this case. Resistor seven goes from pink to yellow. And finally, what we'll say is that resistor eight goes from red node five to purple node six. In drawing these reference directions, I had three rules. Number one, each voltage source, I'm gonna replace with a, uh, an edge where the edge goes from positive to negative. Each current source I'm going to replace with a directed edge in the same direction as the direction of the current source. And then the resistors, I can do it arbitrarily. I can assign edge directions any way that I want. Some electrical engineers get stuck up here on this point because they're used to thinking like here, the current actually is going to run this way. It's going to go from here down to here, especially if I ground this. And so they'll say like, oh, those edges should always be oriented in that direction. And that's not necessarily true. The point of this algorithm is to automate the process of figuring out what's happening. And from that standpoint, what we care about is that we are consistent in the directions that we choose. Now that we've replaced the nodes of the circuit with nodes of our graph and the elements in our circuit with edges in our directed graph, the next question is, well, how do we label the edges? And we're gonna use a very special enumeration scheme. We're going to count, enumerate the edges based on element number within element type. In our work, we're always going to start with resistors, then voltage sources, then current sources. So in other words, let's call edge one associated with resistor one in that order. So this is edge one. We're going to say edge two is associated with resistor two. We're going to say edge three is associated with resistor three. So this right there would be edge three. Edge four is associated with resistor four, five, resistor five, six, resistor six, seven, resistor seven, eight, resistor eight. Now the question is, well, where do we go from there? What we're gonna say is after we're done enumerating the resistive 
edges, we're going to go on to the voltage source edges and we're going to continue our enumeration scheme from where we left off. So here's the first edge corresponding to the voltage source. That should be one more than that one. We'll call that E9. Second voltage source, again, we're using the same ordering that exists in our schematic. So voltage source one gets E9, voltage source two, keep going, E10. Now we're gonna go on to current sources because we're out of voltage sources. Current source one gets the next one, that would be E11. And then current source two gets the next one, which is E12. We have now formally exhausted the entire list. What's really special about that is 12 is the number of elements. So we have now confirmed that each element gets replaced by an edge. We count those edge started with the first eight in the same order that I labeled those numbers in my circuit description. Then we continue on with the next two. Eight plus two is 10. That's exactly what we see there. The next two should go up to 12. That's exactly what we see. And that corresponds to what we expect. The last thing I'm gonna mention here is formally in mathematics, we don't actually use the spatial representation, the drawing that you see here to encode a graph, we use what we call set theory. And in the set theoretic definition of an edge, what we'll say is that we look at, at every edge. So let's say that we're looking at edge E1. So edge E1 is an element of the set um, of edges. And then this is gonna be a subset of the set of nodes cross the set of nodes. This is all set theoretic in, in my linear algebra videos, I go through this. But the claim that I'm gonna make is each edge, we're gonna call an ordered pair. Remember an ordered pair is parentheses with two coordinates, so check this out. We're gonna say edge one goes from node one to node seven. So the first edge in this graph is gonna go from one no node one to node seven. The second edge in this graph is gonna go out of, the first coordinate is gonna be the node it comes out of, out of node two, into node one. And the reason that we use parentheses is because these are directed. There actually is a direction. It goes from the first to the second coordinate. And then we just keep listing edges all the way down till we get to edge 12. And edge 12 goes, looks like, out of node seven into node five. Out of node seven into node five. Here on screen, you see a set theoretic formal definition of all the edges in the circuit that come from this graphical representation of our digraph model for a circuit. You can find that and many other gems in the full solution write-up that I provide for example two on the support website. Remember the whole step two was to model our circuit as a directed graph. We have done so here and of course I can't help myself. I had to type it up and make it beautiful. Once we have the directed graph representation of our circuit, we can actually model the connectivity and the directions using what we call an incidence matrix. In step three, we do exactly that. Come on linear algebra, let me see you. Speak to me matrices. See you in the next video.